Welcome back. Okay, on this episode we have a few things to go over real quick first before we get to work. Um A few of them is another envoy from uh this lord. I he he's still not really addressing himself by name, but whatever. Uh came by and he came by with several different gifts. I don't know how to take these gifts because well, let, let's let's put it this way. Um, I'm very suspicious of when somebody comes by and says, "Oh, hey, by the way, here's some free stuff." Yeah, because there's nothing suspicious at all about, you know, getting free stuff. I'm sure. But anyhow, we we were gifted a few different animals, um, and we'll go over those in just a second. Right now, I'm gonna grab a little bit of hay. Yeah, we'll probably need to grab some of the stuff over there soon. And then let's come on over to the tailor. Something important worth noting is, um... With a knife, you can shear sheep and you get one wool. However... With shears, you shear them and you get two. So if you are running out of things like wool way too quickly, you can use that technique. And it'll, it'll help it stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so some of the gifts that we got were some chickens. So let's get some nesting boxes made for them. Now, I'm going to have the, uh, the nesting boxes inside, so they won't always have access to them. This is partially because if you if you let them have access all the time, you're going to get a mm. explosion, which just, it, it ruins, like, your frame rate, it ruins everything. So we're just going to mm. put a nesting box here, and hopefully, um... Mm. We can start getting some eggs. When we want them to stop giving eggs, what we can do is we can just shove them out. Hopefully, shove them out. Okay, well this guy's backed himself in a corner, so... Maybe we can shove this one out? Yes, 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 I see it. And move away, thank you. But yeah, I, I'm just derping around with the chickens a little bit. When we don't want them to be laying eggs, however, we can go ahead and... This is what I'm trying to show you. And it's the very thing that it's not letting me show you. We can just go like that and... There we go. They won't have access to it, so they won't lay, and as a result, you won't have a unmanageable event happen. We also got a couple cows. She's not ready to um, have any milk get collected right now. We'll just put the bucket in there for right now, um... But yeah. The crop's coming in pretty nicely. Later on, after we get the appropriate tools, we will... Put some better water supplies in here. So that it all kind of... Comes up a little bit faster. And... A little bit more on time, together. And I'm just showing you some of the things I do off camera. Uh, yeah. Figured you might want to see the town a little bit better. Since a lot of the time I'm just working on a single specific build. Got some of the grains over here coming in. But today we are going to be working on the church back this way. And 
we're gonna do that about as fast as we can because I don't know when this this envoy is gonna come back and say okay yeah the Lord wants to move in because if if he comes back and says that I yeah I think we're probably gonna have to stop what we're doing and build the guy a house and I don't know how picky he's gonna be I mean yeah we could just build him a house but I I don't know if any Lord that's gonna want to stay in a, a regular house oh by the way this place has been finished up by the way so we have some beds up here little chamber pot there We may get a chance we're going to start doing some outside decorations. Um, as some of you guys have pointed out, the walls are a little flat. Now, part of that's intended, part of it's not. It, it is intended to be pretty ordinary and pretty plain. But at the same time, it's not supposed to be so, um, so plain that it's an eyesore. If you... If you know what I mean. You might know what I mean, but you might not. You know, and I think I might actually just go ahead and grab the shovel too. We're not going to try to do a lot of terraforming, but we might have to do some. We are definitely going to have to figure out how to get out here on a regular basis. One thing is for sure, I think I'm going to be uh, tearing down parts of this wall. It, it doesn't have much of a point on this side since it's nothing but buildings. What I will have to do uh, when I do that is put a little stream across here so that nothing can come in over this wall but otherwise all this is is shop face and I, I could just cut back this wall to about here and we don't really need any of that being defended it'll give us the first part where we can reconstruct a new wall so let's let's get on to the actual build today we, we have a few different concepts that we are going to be going over, and yeah, I know, I sound a little weird. I woke up pretty recently, and then I ate my breakfast, and then it's just trying to get down my throat, and I'm trying to talk while it's trying to go down. does not work that well. So... Actually, a lot of the land is organized this way, so let's take that as an advantage. Let's just cut a few of these down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's get one more. Now, I thought the day just started. Yeah, it did, but um, it's already it's already ending. So I will be back in a minute. Okay, and we are back. Um, so, there's a few different options for making a, a religious center here, and since I'm more familiar with the uh, Christian churches, I'm just going to make one of those, but you could equally make either a synagogue or a mosque or a, a temple, it doesn't really matter, but the traditional churches, which is what we're going to make today, has a pattern very similar to this. Now, what we could do for size matters is we could cut that off and it would still be relatively proportionate. Now what we want to do is we don't want to pick ourselves a scale and make sure it fits in here. We also need to incorporate a parish and a graveyard into this plot. So we need to make sure that we set room aside for that and that's where our handy friends the torches come in so let's go ahead and 
Pick a number, let's say the number five. Um, so each one of these blocks is going to be five blocks then. We have a two block gap there. And then that's another two right here, so one, two, three, four, five would be the length. And that would be a corner. One, two, three, four, no, one, one, two, three, four, five, and that would be the corner. So let's just push this back a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go find our corner again. Okay, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go find our corner. Corner should be about right there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go find our corner. Then we can double check this and make sure that it's, yes it is, it's the right size. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and be right here, right? We could go ahead and turn this into this style. It, it does look nicer. It also adds to the scale a little. I think we're going to go with a pretty small one. <coughs> mm, excuse me. So there we go. That will be the inside inlay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to level out the inside. We are not going to touch the outside. Do not level the outside. If you level the outside, you detract from the amount of visual appeal that your building will actually have. Now we do have two options on this. We could either level out the traditional way that we've been doing or we could all get it more or less to the same level. Now the way you get it all to the same level is like if, if we wanted it to come up here, okay? Which I don't think we do because that one's one lower and I think we're probably just gonna... Yeah, I think that would be a waste. So we just dig this out. Let's leave our markers in place for the time being. And in, in, in the interest of time, after I show you the very basic step of what we're doing, um, I'll basically cut and come back after all this digging's done. Because I'm sure digging is not the thing that you're here for. So let's put some of that raw stone in. Once again, the advantage of the raw stone is it gives us the ability to work with it in whatever form we want. And we're just going to dig this out and then replace it with raw stone. And we'll be back. Okay, we are back. We have essentially done that step. Um, and I, I took a quick poll of how many chairs we could get in here. And the number comes up to 44. Now that sounds like a lot, but... When I finish this place, it's going to be well over 134. So that's that's not going to cut it for the needs. Um, and that's, that's not even figuring in the soldiers or the guards. Excuse me while I drink for a second. There we go. 
Okay, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend this. Uh, apparently five was too small. So maybe we should pick seven. And see where that goes. Now we, we obviously have some of this that's gonna possibly get torn up as we adjust the sizes. Um, the way we fix that is we, we turn it into, into smooth stone before we pull it up. Because a lot of my idea is we want the actual decorative stuff in the center with the walkways and we want some regular smooth stone towards where the seats are going to be so that you're not wasting your your effort smoothing out underneath the chairs so yeah it's as simple as remeasuring it now that is seven wide we can pull these up now we just need to count out seven this way and then just shift the entire figure so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we got our corner. So this corner now gets moved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which would be this one. Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we got our corner. So now we can remove this one and this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And and you get the idea. So I'm just gonna measure this out off camera. And I will be back um basically when there's something more to see. Like when we start shifting some of these blocks on over to make way. So see you soon. And welcome back. Um yeah I'm in the bottom of a pretty decent size hole here. You're probably wondering why, and this is to show you just a small sample of some of the stone work I have to do in order to supply this with the stone it has. And we've we've ran out of phylite once we got down here too, so um, really gonna have to be pretty clever about how I'm using the stuff I have already. Or I have to go ahead and start a new quarry, which Although it's not a big deal, it means a lot of digging just to get down to the firelight level. So with that being said, I will see you guys back at the build after I sort out my inventory by a bit. That's a massive hole. That's massive. And it's going to go all the way down too. And yeah, talk to you later. Okay, I'm back, and I've laid in the stone that I collected. Um, it's it's not enough. It was enough for this, that, almost enough for the center, it's enough for that, almost enough for this, and pretty much not at all enough for this. So I'm gonna have to, I guess, open a new quarry. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. But in the meantime, you know what? I want to put out this video faster, so I'm going to jump on to the next target which starts getting us into things like the walls uh now while i go and collect the supplies i need for the walls i will talk about the two different types of techniques i can use here um i could either use the gothic style or i could use the traditional style if i go with the traditional style it has a few advantages but it has some disadvantages too. Um, so let's let's briefly talk about some of those. The the advantages is it takes less material, and it um well to be quite frank, 
has a more open feel. But it, it's not as time relevant to what we would be doing here. So, yeah, it's kind of a hard call on it. We, we are running out of, out of stone, so I don't know. Maybe... Maybe I will, but at the same time, the stone that we're running out of, it's the, um... It's the smooth stone from the ground. It's, it's not these, uh, cobblestones. So... I don't know. I might go with the traditional style. One thing's for sure, I need to get some more sand started. Not sand, but, uh, mortar. And I, I've been using the tanner space for that, actually. Mm, let's grab a little bit more sand than that. It's the only bad thing about sand. If you don't keep an eye on it, it's really hard to tell where it goes. Okay, so let's go get that started. By the way, I decided not to not to put the door here. I'm going to have a passageway coming back this way. Accessible from the outside and the courtyard here. So yeah. Let's let's get those walls started up pretty quickly. Which ones do we want to use? And does this have enough? It does. Okay, good. <laughs> Gonna have to get some more uh, flux border started, too. Anyhow, uh, the size of this is gonna work out to be about 78 seats or something like that. I could probably squeeze a few more in. Um, with two different sessions, that should that should cover it. So I think that's what I'm gonna do since I need two sessions to make room for the guards anyway. At which point the only only real question is, do we go with gothic or do we go with? And I I use the the word traditional, but it's it's not really traditional. It's just. I don't remember the name for it, I guess would be a good way to, to phrase that. I know that's kind of kind of shameful that I'm just you now doing it that way, but still. So let's just put some caps on here, start planning out where we want the entrances. I was going to have the entrance on this side, but... I, I don't think that's gonna really work. Yeah, no, so we'll we'll decorate that side up a bit. Um no entrance on that side, that's for sure. I guess we could have people exiting out this way and getting access to a graveyard that we can put over here. Maybe we'll put the graveyard over here and have the parish over here. That actually kinda sounds pretty nice. Yeah, I might just do that. Anyhow, um... I'm gonna get this thing framed out real quick. And... Obviously, where you see exposed bits of dirt, we're gonna be wanting to pull those out. We kinda want this to have a solid look from the outside. We also will be coming back later and doing some more... Uh, decorating on this um, just because this building is gonna be so tall and if you if you have a building so tall and it's all flat surface um, it, it looks like shit so we are going to definitely come back and maybe put some braces on this we don't want it to be too decorated from the outside because that's just not the way buildings are done I, I hate these these people who go along and be like 
okay, we're just going to add the support here for no other reason than decoration and it has no purpose and you would not see it in real life, but we're going to do it just because I want to be in. Well, you know, I'm just going to stop there because I have nothing nice to say uh, about people who add that much decoration to it. So I'm, I'm going to see what I can do about maybe putting some supports and braces where they would actually have a purpose and yeah. I'm going to frame this up and we will be back. Okay, we've gotten some of the walls done. Um, and this just kind of naturally opened up here. And, you know, I think it's not going to be a bad place to have, to have an entrance. So they're going to come in this way. Which means we should probably dig out a little bit of a walkway here. Not sure if I want it to be one wide or two wide on the entrance, but... You know, we got, we got plenty of stun bricks. We'll, we'll decide that later. Right now, we'll just mark it as an entrance. Um, then the more or less lectern is going to be here. We're going to have a wing of seats over here. This will have seats as you come in. This will have seats as you uh, go down there. And over here, we will have ourselves the uh, altar. And I think for the sake of beauty, actually, um, I might go ahead and go with the gothic style. Which means that I'm going to have to extend these up quite a bit. So let's decide where we want the window, and how big of a window we want. I think for this one we want it kind of centered. I mean, I do have the option of having a, a two wide window here, and a two wide window here, with a, a small frame in between, but I think this one we want centered. So let's go ahead and do that. We are obviously going to have our corners. So then this right here, that's... That would be 12 feet wide. Yeah, we, we could do that. And yes, I'm using the Imperial system. For all the users that are using the metric system, 4 meters wide, whatever. So let's go ahead and see what we can do over here for windows. Uh, this one we do want it to be split there. What would happen if we split that there? Two windows and then, yep, that works just fine. Oh boy, I'm gonna sleep off the night then I'll be back. Okay, I am back. Um. I've made a few different decisions, and some of them are just on a more practical level. Let's go ahead and move these, uh, and actually put some doors in. That way we're not constantly breaking blocks in order to get in and work on this. And that kind of makes my decision for me about those. Yes, that unspider proofs it. Um, don't particularly care too much right now, actually, because I will be tearing down that wall anyhow. And I also decided to go ahead and uh, split this into two parts, since this is taking so long. So we will do what we can this episode. And that's mainly going to be uh, setting out where the windows will be. Let's keep that one a little bit more narrow. And basically uh, setting out where we're going to be uh, carving on the floor. Let's actually do that now. Because we're going to have the seats over here, okay? And 
And we're going to have seats over here too. And you can see that I'm, I'm not extending this all the way up to the corner. I'm kind of bringing it back by one. And that's because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to position it. So I'm not going to set it in stone. Yeah, quite literally. Until I know for a fact what's going on. Okay, and back here, we're more or less going to do the same thing. You can tell that these are three and that these are two. Uh, the main reason is because that side over there with the two is going to have a walkway. And we don't exactly want the, uh, the chairs to get involved with that. So let's go take a look at the mason and find out which pattern for a walkway we actually want for this. Firelights over here. Let's do the small outline. You could do either. But I, I think the small outline is going to look nice. Let's see if we can get back up here. Yep, we can. I'm trying to make this nice and fast for you guys. It's the big outline, and that's the small outline. That's the only thing I, I don't like about that particular mod. It it does not give you much in the way of knowing when you have the small outline or the big outline. But yeah, that I think that's going to look quite nice. And it also breaks up a lot of the mess with the chairs. And it gives that kind of distinct, different feel to it without really being overwhelming. A lot of people, they go for the, the let's break things up, which is, it's a great idea, it's a great concept, but then they forget, they forget so much, and that's what you can do with simple things. I kind of liked what we did on the other corner over there, so let's go ahead and keep it no bigger than three. The exception is going to be over here because that's where the altar is. And that's just going to that's going to open it up so much. And we're going to put glass windows in there. Um as far as that's concerned though, I think we're going to call that an episode. Maybe we'll do a little bit more with this on camera, but you, you get the basic idea. Uh, let's go ahead and mark where we want the altar and finish up with the floor, then we are going to definitely call it. We want it back by two blocks, so back by two. Yeah, if that's the altar, Well, actually, let's let's pull it forward by one. Yeah, that's gonna look good. Then we can put the lectern here. And what you could do is you could raise up the lectern. That's actually a, a rather good idea to do because then it, it lets better projection of audio uh, of uh, audio and you could go with either the same pattern or a different pattern that's the lectern we're gonna want it to be outlined by about here which means that if we Bring it out like this, and then carry it on that way.
then we could come back over here and say that these are chairs. Those are chairs. Those are chairs. Those are chairs. And then we can kind of do a little bit more of a decorative pattern. So large and small. Can I kind of curve it there? No. How about that? Yeah, that looks good. And then we can... I hesitate to put anything there. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll break up the pattern a bit. So let's bring it back over to large. And just throw in some corner bits. And that's gonna that's gonna break up the floor and kind of blend it in without having to take up too much of the actual visual pathway. And we could also do that to outline the lectern. But once again, like I said, I'm probably gonna raise that up and I'll probably use some wood for that or maybe a different color stone. I don't know, we'll discuss more about that on the next episode. I will be raising these up a bit and when we come back, I will show you how high we raised it up and um, we'll also go over some buttresses and flying buttresses. Because this is gothic, it's going to need flying buttresses and because it is seven wide and stone usually doesn't like to support things that are seven wide. We'll have to do a few things with um, interior supports. And that's that's all going to break up the image without giving this I'm putting things to break it up for no other reason than breaking it up. Construction is complex enough. Let's not overcomplicate it. Until next time, I'll talk to you later.